Well, it's a beautiful, crisp, cold, but sunny Friday morning. Is it the same in Donegal, Pat? It's the same, actually. Uh, a certain person accuses me of looking out my window a lot while we're doing these. <laughs> but, uh, How else would you do what the weather was going to be like? <laughs> exactly. And as well as that, dude, there's, uh, I, I think somebody described where I live as a, a, a woodland garden. And like there's trees all around. And every so often you'll see... Uh, Something happening and a shadow catches your eye, so you're you're looking around. So anyway, so oh, fine envy, morning, Doctor Collins. I, I envy you, Pat. I envy. You, I have to say it sounds just delightful. Uh, they say trees have a healing influence, and everybody used to laugh at uh, Prince Charles uh, for hugging trees, and now it's everybody's saying, "Well, hmm, maybe he's right." Maybe he was right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have a lot of serious topics here to deal with today. Uh, some of them we've talked about, I think, before, but. It, or maybe I've blogged over them. Anyway, the first one in the list is, oh, spare me my laughter, but uh, double jobbing? Double yeah, jobbing? Uh, <laughs> we, we, we talked about, about that last week, didn't we? We talked about it on Monday. Uh, <laughs> because on Sunday, it came oh, out. Right, right, yeah. uh, Sir, Sir Geoffrey was, had been, I presume, given some sort of uh, uh, a starting pistol by um, Brandon <laughs> Lewis that he could go ahead and do this. And he was all cock a hoop when he was interviewed at the weekend about the fact that uh, he didn't do this at all, and it, uh, and but it was there, and the other people were asleep at the wheel, and that but uh, the DUP were now going to take advantage of this, which meant that he could both be an MP and run for the assembly election. That was and a, avoid a, a, avoid a loss in Langham. Avoid a loss. I was all go go go. It was looking great for the DUP <laughs> on Tuesday. On Tuesday morning, in comes Boris Johnson into the, the Commons, and. For apparently without by your leave, as my mother used to say, just withdrew the proposal there and then. And I, uh, I, I saw Andy McLafferty uh, interviewing Jeffrey, and he says, uh, Jeffrey, are you angry about this? He says, No, I know I am full of energy about it. Like you could see him spitting venom, you know, because now, like the DUP could, like, could they lose a seat at Westminster? And that's another drop they down. Definitely. Like could. I know it's Sarcha, Sarcha Eastwood from yep. the Alliance. Uh, right. So it could be very interesting. Oh, yes. And it would be disastrous. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's going to be fairly disastrous anyway for the DUP because they have the Ulster Unionists, they have the TUV, and then, of course, they have the expanded uh, popularity of the Sinn Fein. So yes. it's going to be bad either way. But if they, in addition to that, if Jeffrey starts off, sort of, so to speak, by losing a seat in Westminster, yes. wow, I, well, I would uh, yeah. have terrible uh, fears for the for the DP. Uh, yeah, and I, it, it's, so like the other question, uh, you know, I've asked it of you before. How many uh, kicks <laughs> in the nether regions, as I put it, one day? Are the, are the DUB going to take from this administration in Westminster before they copped on? You know, like yeah. that's at least two or three I'm aware of that they have sort of, let's say, betrayed the DUP. What do you think? You, you think, Pat, that double jobbing is no good? Uh, you were saying uh, the last days, I recall, I mean, if you were the editor of the Dairy Journal and you couldn't have another job as the editor of the Belfast well, Telegraph. Well, Colm Colum, Colum, Colum Eastwood was, was on, I heard him on um, Evening Extra, whatever they held, he called the BBC News programme these days. Uh, and he said, look, uh, uh, there was something going on at Stormont. And he says, but there's also something going on at Westminster. He says, I would like to be both, but there's no way I can do both. And Jude, uh, my, Jude, I couldn't be a school teacher and editor of the journal at, at the one time. Something like you're going to miss something of importance at either place. And I, Jude, you know, what does they say? If you're a master of none, what's that rule about? Aye, you can aye, try and aye, spread aye. yourself too thin, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, do you remember that uh, John Hume and Ian Paisley both, uh, as I remember it, held three different posts at the same time? Europe, well, uh, you, MP, you, and uh, I think there was some sort of assembly at that stage, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, yeah, but I think Jude, it was a sort of a different era then, and so like Hume, Hume rarely Hume worked between Westminster and Strasbourg or, yeah. uh, most of the time, and, right. and it was very effective at doing doing that. But uh, I think uh, I've. There's a devolved administration now. There wasn't really a de much of a devolved administration back then. Uh, but the principal Pat still holds. If he's able, to, he was able to do those two jobs at once, and you say do them effectively, then out of principle, double jobbing should no, be. Jude, no, it's not quite the same thing, right? Hume, these are big parliaments. What six hundred and fifty people in Westminster? At an assembly in Northern Ireland. There was no assembly up and running then, Jude. 
Yeah, you know, it was, uh, you know, so the assembly only got up and running really uh, after the Good Friday Agreement. Yeah, but are you saying that uh, it, it depends on the circumstances? You wouldn't rule it out as a principle? No, not as principle, but I'd like, I, I, basically double jobbing. Like there was all sorts of, uh, I presume there was very good reasons. And it seemed at the time, I remember vaguely, there was all sorts of, these people are run, uh, uh, running over to Westminster. They're not concentrating on what's happening here. There was mm -hmm. concerns about, you know, things, you know, that, that the, the centre couldn't hold. And they wanted local people making local decisions. And that was that ah. struck me as a very fair way of doing things. Well, if, yeah, one guy's trying to, trying to hold up, what? I completely agree with the idea of local people making local decisions. I, Irish people making Irish decisions. But uh, I, I'm, I'm um, a bit iffy about this double jobbing thing because I'll tell you the truth. Throughout my working life, like I was, either, I was a lecturer most of the time, but I did an awful lot of media work. So was I, I was double jobbing. Uh, but it wasn't inter one wasn't interfering with the other. Well, I, they, these people could argue the same thing. No, you can't. You can't. You can't sit in two parliaments at the one time. I mean, you could say, well, you know, not very few uh, MPs are in the chamber every day. Yeah, but uh, Jude, you're, uh, but if you're there for votes, people and the discussions and debates and working, you know, you can't be sitting in Belfast uh, and Stormont. You can't be at Westminster on the same day. That's the point. It's tricky. You, you, like, uh, no, you, what, you, what you were saying is right. I am doing a bit of work for the BBC, but I am lecturing. But I'll do my work in the evening for the BBC. After yeah. my yeah. lecturing is yeah. over, so yeah. like I, 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 you're not comparing like with likes with greatest respect. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have some. I think in general, I would say double jobbing is a bad idea, but yeah. I would say there are cases certainly where there are people who have sufficient energy and who yeah. are giving satisfaction to whoever's employing them or whatever forum they're they're speaking in or a member of. Uh, yeah. That I would I would allow those sort of people to. I think it allowed those people to uh, go ahead with it. But anyway, it's, it's beside the point because the whole point of this is that uh, yeah. uh, poor Jeffrey was hoping for double jobbing, not because he believed in it in principle, because he wanted to save his skin in Lagan Valley or the skin of his yeah, party. That's, that's, and that's, he that's, hasn't really, that's not going to happen. No, it's not. Uh, well, we, should way, it's, uh, 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 we shouldn't be throwing our fists in there and saying, you! We should yeah, be saying, no, it's not very uh, sad. The, 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 yeah, I. But the DUP, you nearly, you know, it's like you know the, the school bully that you never, you would never tear <laughs> slap in his face. Well, you know, uh, there's a certain element. The DUP, their arrogance, almost, I was uh, pride cometh before a fall. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, uh, and yeah. there's a lot of that. Uh, uh, even the other unionists are nearly saying they, they were so arrogant for so long. You no, know, and I always re refer back to that uh, time they were uh, they had Theresa May's government by the short and curlies. Oh yes. Did the yeah. day, day bask in the limelight? Loved the spotlight. Arrogance personified. You know we're calling the shots. Imagine that. Uh, um, I always remember Arden's uh, saying uh, pulling Theresa May out, out of a meeting with the EU within a bit an hour before they signed a major international agreement, and then she said one time when Boris came over that she was going to send him to the naughty step. Imagine the DUP saying, telling a British Prime Minister, no, <laughs> whether, whether you agree with the British Prime Minister, yeah, but it's another matter, yeah. but that they were sending him to the naughty step. It was yeah. such arrogance. <laughs> so change times, I'll tell you. Okay, well, let's move slightly uh, on the double jobbing thing to what's happening in uh, Westminster at present. And this guy, William Ragg, the MP, is he, what, he's got uh, some particular post, I think, has he? Um, uh, yeah, he's on one of the senior committees, I think. Is he a chair uh, of one of the committees? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's saying that there's been blackmailing of yeah. MPs to keep them in line that they wouldn't um, show any signs yeah, vote of, of no voting or uh, a vote of confidence. Uh, and Boris Johnson. And he, yeah. he's actually, Judy, it's a very serious allegation. Like everybody knows that the whoops you know, engage in you know, arm twisting. But he says, that, uh, this guy is taking it so serious. He said, that, that what's gone on should be reported, he says, to I, the Speaker of the, uh, of the House and I, to the Met Commissioner. He said, I, they, 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 what's happening is they, uh, some of the MPs who threatened to vote against Boris have been told uh, uh, by the whoops that uh, funding for their constituencies, no projects, will be withdrawn. And uh, what else? He's, what else? Someone else, he's, uh, he says, embarrassing stories would be planted in some of the pro, like the, I presume the yeah. Sun and the Daily Mail and the Telegraph of, of guys to, to embarrass him. And he says, that's blackmail and intimidation. 
And you know what's, and but no, just one thing. But when you put that with David Davis, a former uh, uh, grandee or big wig, uh, big beast in the Tory party, saying to tell Boris to go earlier this week, Jude, what is going on underneath? Well, see all those things you mentioned, Pat. Yeah, I, I frankly, I mean, who, who was surprised by that? Not nobody least. surprised by that. The whip's job is to get. I mean, the whip. They don't call him the whip for nothing. Yeah. You know, they don't call him the persuader. They're more likely yeah. to be the enforcer. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure, certainly they'd use honey and certainly they'd <clears throat> try to persuade the guy on, or woman on rational grounds. But I'm certain that there would be pressure put on people. And it's a question of how much pressure. So, well, how much is as much, I, much you, pressure no, that, I, as much as was I, needed in I, whatever way. Well, I, but the big, the big issue is how serious Boris's position is that they've resorted to this and the fact that uh, this is, Jude, normally it's an omerta, they stay quiet, but this is starting to come out. And when you get somebody like David Davis, a former uh, Brexit guy, a uh, former big beast, and what, as I've said, yeah, yeah. standing up in public in the House of Commons and say, for God's sake, go to the <laughs> Prime Minister. And this is a guy who won 83 seat majority what, last year, the yeah, year before. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that says something indeed about Boris Johnson's present position. But I'm not at all surprised by the idea of uh, whips and different uh, people going around and saying, if you don't vote the way we want, we'll release to the press this, or hint yeah. at it, we'll release this yeah. story about you and what you're up to that your wife yeah. doesn't know about. Or yeah. we'll, whatever. Know, yeah. some way or another, we'll make life difficult for you. We'll not give yeah. you that. Somebody said, uh, oh, there goes your bypass. Uh, yeah. One of the MPs. And they said he wasn't talking about a, a cardiac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was talking about his town. Uh, uh, yeah. going to lose a bypass. But I'm sure I would feel certain that that kind of thing was on, has been going on forever. And yeah. the whip would use as much pressure as is necessary. He'd use all the weapons at his or her command as necessary. So I just I, find but, this idea of throwing your hands up in horror at it. I just think that's a little bit naive. No, right? Dr. Collins, with respect, there must not that point, and I was nearly going to use a swear word there. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the point is that this is coming out in the public. It's You, you expect the usual churn on the background of a vote. Yeah. But that's, the fact that a guy, a senior Tory, gets up and in a public meeting says, he, th he says this is blackmail, and that, that these should be reported to the speaker and to the Metropolitan Police. Yeah, that yeah. is what's different here. I, I, I'd agree with you that. I'd agree with you that. It's not that uh, this wasn't going on and everybody sort of uh, knew it was going on, but you have this the level of coming out and seeing, and seeing uh, it's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. It shows you how, well, you know, it's, it's very much like, <laughs> dare I say it, it sounds a wee bit like the DUP redux because <laughs> the DUP were at a stage where they, sliced one leader's uh, political throat, Arlene Foster, Foster, put in a new one, sliced his throat, I've and then put in a new one again. So, yeah. uh, you know, when I think when parties are afraid, they begin to get very angry with each other. And they yeah, start, yeah. it's like, dare I say, ferrets in a bag, biting yeah. the hell out of each other. Yeah. Uh, and that was what happened with the DUP, probably is still happening with the DUP, and that's what's happening with the uh, Conservatives at present. It's yeah. a very entertaining sight to watch. That's all I can ah, say. That's great. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it gives colour to the carnival of life. Okay, yeah. let's move from lay things to, um, well, it's very interesting, to, to uh, I suppose you could call them religious things. Uh, mm -hmm. On TV and everywhere else, newspapers, Pope Benedict has been uh, reported as having not reported for abusing priests. Yeah. He was and the Germany. Archbishop of Munich. Yeah. And they're saying, I don't know what they're saying. Are they saying he should be punished or are they saying he should be disgraced? Well, the, the, what, I, the bit I read yesterday, no, Jude, I'm not all, all, all across it that well. Basically, they said that in the report, the, arch, the archdiocese said they will study the report in depth, in depth yeah. before giving yeah. a, a, an in-depth response to it sometime next week. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, And yeah. the Pope has apparently issued some sort of statement saying he uh, rejects the claims of whatever. But anyway, yeah. Investigation in Munich uh, that there were four priests apparently that he took, either didn't take any action against or insufficient action against. But you'd like, let's be honest, this is a long, long line of the latest allegations of cover up by the, um, uh, of sexual abuse within the Catholic Church. And like, is anybody surprised? 
no, I suppose hardly anybody is, but this is the Pope. <laughs> or a, a Pope. Um, yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a point I want to, there's an underlying point I want to come back to because it links with this uh, story. There's that column that Dermot Furniture has in Irish Times today about the Guardi and the uh, Guardi's history and yeah. the extent to which they were dealing with what he called di difficult and sordid aspects of Irish life, especially yeah. in the early days of their history, in the 30s yeah, yeah. and so on. Um, and he comes up even to the present, uh, well, during the Troubles, uh, they were providing some of the uh, difficult and sordid aspects themselves. They were yeah. you know, roughing up people, the heavy gang and all that. Um, yeah. uh, and he seems to indicate that there was a sort of a culture, as you say, of a merta, you know, keep your trap shut, you don't yeah. betray comrades, etc. What's your take on that, Pat? I, I mean, I believe it, but I'm sure that's the case. What they're do, do, uh, I, I sat, there's been two programs, and the, the, it's a trilogy, of, uh, and the third part's on next uh, mm -hmm. Monday night on RT. It's called Crimes and Confessions. Yeah. And Jude, you know, when I was a young reporter, I uh, started off in Letterkenny, and I remember being told by several people there was this heavy, they brought in all, all over the place. And there was a guy called uh, uh, Inspector Jerry O'Carroll who was on the RT and I said there was no heavy gang. With the greatest respect to him, there almost <laughs> certainly was a heavy gang. Uh, uh, everybody knows it. In fact, Dermot Ferder and his piece I was just reading, and he says, there's still, some Gary still boast about it. But you, uh, what was wrong about it on big time? These guys uh, uh, were paraded as paragons of policing and uh, the good guys and all the rest of it. But you, there, there was a Gerd Kolodunsky killed at somewhere down south. I can't remember exactly. That was the first program. Three young fellas who happened to be in the area were arrested and absolutely destroyed their lives. One was actually murdered by uh, relatives of the Gerd. Uh, the, the other, another one spent time in jail and another one uh, couldn't, he, he, uh, he lived in the area, but when he went out, people started talking about him and all that. The, but there was clearly another car that wasn't even, but they, uh, they got, Confessions of them, they beat that crap at him. Mm. And eventually, mm -hmm. they, when uh, one of the guys had an appeal, the, um, George Hardiman, I think was the name, of the, when he read out the evidence, he said what, what they have described was impossible. What the Gardaí had described was impossible. Mm -hmm. So, and last sure. week, uh, there was one, what was it, uh, at the Sounds Train, Robert, yeah. Oscar yeah. Rannock, and uh, Nicky Kelly were on. Yeah, that was and the evidence eventually there was thrown, shown to be totally false. They falsified evidence to get convictions. Mm. And, you know, Jude, one of the big thing too, in the early days of trouble, was they were very fond of beating the crap out of young Republicans. You know, that was, uh, and they were sending a message and all that. And people said, was, uh, I suppose, how do you explain this? I knew a Gardy um, back in the day who hated Republicans and Republicans hated him. And he said they were subversive against the state. And one of the things, the bad feeling was that uh, the Gardaí beat the hell out of Republicans and that the Gardaí were working hand in glove with the RUC, who Republicans hated. So, Jude, that's, uh, I would love a historian like uh, Ferder to uh, examine those sort of links and all the rest and see the poison that came out of all that. Well, maybe you could get Drew Nelson to set up a small subcommittee to investigate that. <laughs> Drew Harris, you mean? <laughs> Sorry, Drew, Harris. Okay, Drew, Drew Harris, Drew Harris. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In other words, the um, what is he? The commissioner of the Guardi? Commissioner, commissioner Guardi. Yeah, but, yeah. But you, you know, the, the the third one is Joanne Hayes, and apparently five people have con uh, confessed to things in that particular trial, and mm. I think all five scientifically they discovered it to be impossible. Mm. You know. Well, so. Pat, tell me this, Pat. Do you see this this question of? Well, I'm going to link these two stories. There's Pope Benedict not reporting mm. on these abusers, these priests, right? Uh, and uh, there's the, the heavy, or people in the, the Guardi who would have known about the heavy gang or were members yeah. of the heavy gang themselves. Including, and including they, the they, 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 uh, they boasted of it or else they kept a lid on it. They didn't tell people. But I, uh, so uh, in both cases, um, what do you think? Is there anything to be said for them doing that? Keeping the mouth shut or... Uh, was there anything besides no, reporting I, 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 abusers? Yeah, I, I, well, I, I agree with Ferder. Uh, he said he was asked to write uh, uh, or contribute to a history of the Garda Chicana <laughs> last year, the <laughs> centenary. And he said <laughs> halfway, uh, and he said yeah. when he checked out, he went back to the, the 30s and he said, uh, uh, you know, he says, any academic, if you're writing history, he said he was informed 
uh, no, you, you can't write, it will be vetted by the Garda Press Office. In other words, it's going to be a hagiography rather than a history. No, in other words, we were the good guys and we didn't. And what I wrote down what he said, there was, he said, unless the Garda were prepared to confront their difficult and sordid aspects of their own history, he wasn't going to get involved in. And you, the, the, I, yeah. You'll go ahead, finish your point. No, but what, what I'm saying, I don't think wrong, covering up wrongdoing, but eventually I think it poisons things. Uh, I'll just come back to that point very briefly to Dermot Ferreter and this thing about these guys saying, we want to look at what you're going to publish before you publish yeah, it. Yeah. And Dermot yeah. Ferreter is in so many words saying, take a run and jump at yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, as a former academic, you would be surprised how often some form of that operated. Oh, yeah. You would have academics who would get a grant from or money from a commercial organization. You yeah. would write up some history of the organization or, you know, some kind of yeah. a research into it. And then they would present their report to the, um, the organization. And yeah. if, if, if the thing wasn't right, it would be hell to pay. So yeah. but, but very often, I mean, it's the old thing about, it's like this woman uh, who's doing the report on Boris Johnson and company. Sue Gray. She Great. works for the. She works for Boris Johnson. Yeah. So of course that's going to affect in some way. So when people get grants, academics get grants. Mm. They're being he who pays the piper plays the tune or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Money talks, and that yeah. happens again and again and again. And I, I, I agree completely with Jeremy Ferger's stand, but I, I would suggest that it's much more widespread than he sort of hints it is. Yeah, uh, like it's seen as being, oh God, imagine them wanting us to uh, vet the thing before we'd submit it. That happens a lot. Well, it did anyway, a lot, except there's been some yeah. great sea change since I left. Now, come back to the other thing. What about, what about if you were a Garda during the Troubles, say, right? Or in the yeah. 30s, uh, and some of the people in your unit had involved in beating up guys. Yeah. Right? Um, would you report them? I, I don't know, Jim. I can't honestly say. I, 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 but I'm going to stick by the, the one point I'm making. Uh, once you start doing things like that, once once the law breaker or lawmakers become the law breakers, uh -huh. Jude, the, the whole ed, and, uh, the edifice starts falling down. The respect the Gardaí for years were highly respected. They were an unarmed force, and they had the community behind them. I remember for a long period there, there was, Jude, there was, uh, there were various investigations, and you, you know, and I think there's a legacy issue there for the Guardi that they're no longer trusted and uh, respected in the way that they used to be. Particularly, well, I'm referring to the South of Ireland, though, you know. So th there's a legacy, and but by the way, Jude, when you sit and watch, uh, the young fellows were railroaded. Oscar Branagh said he was kidnapped, torture, and his life was ruined. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mickey Kelly, uh, Kelly Kelly spent, yeah. uh, uh, Kelly, sorry spent 50 years trying to clear his name, you know, mm. and dude, th th there's something seriously, Yeah, I would say, uh, uh, maybe evil is too strong, but I'm not even sure it is too strong, but you know, mm. that these are the people we we charged with holding society together, right. uh, uh, upholding the law, and yep. they are yeah. up to their eyeballs, and That's very dude, bad. you know, how do you, you know, you, 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 maybe you're a priest, and you know, another priest is abusing a child, yeah. like, you know, is there not a notice on you to do the right thing? Well, you know? this is what I'm asking you, Pat. I'm asking you, if you were a Garda, or if you were a priest, for that matter, and you knew of a good friend of yours was abusing kids, or if you knew that uh, a good friend of yours was beating the shit out of uh, various people that they didn't like when they arrested them, yeah. would you report them? I would like to think that I would. Yeah, I've thought about it just because so you, you threw it at me without prayer knowledge. Uh, well, uh, right, here, just, just, just gonna stop you. Stop you one second. Yeah. Look, yeah. Uh, Garda, Garda Morris McCabe, the guy down in Cabin. Yeah. Yeah. He, he there was a murder and he started uh, and there was uh, some other couple of incidents, and he he thought the carelessness, the laziness, the whatever of of the Garda involved in the yeah. and he reported them. He was the one that suffered. Not them. Oh, the whistleblower very often gets it in the neck. But the point I'm yeah. making is, would uh, would you do it yourself if you were in that situation? Uh, see, I, I understand that, of course, it's bad that these people get away with beating up people in, in, in yeah. police stations. Of course, it's bad that uh, priests who are abusing people 
are in any way, you know, allowed to continue doing that. Yeah. But in the, in the situation, if you were in a unit of policemen, or if you're a priest in a parish or whatever, uh, and a good friend of yours was guilty of something, what yeah. would you do? It's a very tricky one. Yeah, it, uh, w. H. Auden, the poet once said, I think it was him, said that if he was faced with the choice between betraying his friend or his country, he hoped he would have the courage to betray his country. Yeah, I remember reading that somewhere in the past. Yeah. That's a, that a very yeah. interesting idea. And you see, that's another thing. If suppose you remember your family, supposing your, supposing your son, or suppose yeah. my, one of my sons came and said, hey, I've, I've killed a man. Mm. And I don't, I don't want to get it out. Would you go to the police? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No. There's no doubt about it. But I, 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 having a hypothetical moral dilemma doesn't change the, the principle. Like, you know, you no, would no, like I agree, to... Think, I agree with you. I agree with you yeah. completely. But I'm just saying, we, we, there's a contradiction between what we, in certain circumstances, we do ourselves and what we hold as a general principle. And there's a danger there, then, that we become... Yeah. Uh, charge the charge of hypocrisy where we point the finger at these guys and we say god look at these guys with their own merit and they wouldn't tell about the bad stuff that's happening and yet yeah. we're saying if we were in that position a very good chance we wouldn't do it we wouldn't tell either right, but you look look at what's come out of uh, keeping your mouth shut um well, yeah, apparently well, yeah. uh, the, the heavy gang used rubber trunches so oh, they yeah, wouldn't yeah, and so on they, they're con con Innocent people went to jail. Their lives got ruined. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. On. Uh, the, the poison that seeped into society, yes. the distrust and all the rest. Mm -hmm. Dude, uh, wrongdoing eventually uh, uh, sort of sort of sickens the, 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 whole, the whole society. Uh, well, you yeah, know? yeah. I, I, I'd like to think that that's the case. Uh, uh, and uh, certainly it is appalling that happened. I just I always find, though, a certain... Um, uh, there's a, a, there's a complexity to the issue, which very rarely yeah. is mentioned, uh, like yeah. the notion of, of what now is Pope Benedict uh, pu putting abusing priests, knowing priests were abusing and not reporting them to authorities. You know, in yeah. the face of it seems scandalous, uh, yeah. awful, and you wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, the idea of the guards keeping quiet about their mates, beating hell out of people and ruining people's lives. Seems mm -hmm. awful. Why wouldn't people report? And yet we know ourselves that if we were close to somebody and we were put in the same situation, we would we'd be thinking of quite a while about it. And I yeah. would frankly say, if there's a member of my family, I wouldn't. I, I'd be the same as a member of my family. I wouldn't be the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but a lot, a lot of Gardy knew that, uh, these guys were doing things like this, and uh, they also had led to serious miscarriages of justice. And it impacted the society. Oh, yeah. You know, I, what is the, the, the upholders of the law? Not, not only should justice be done, but be seen to be done. Uh, uh, not, uh, not to be seen uh, to, be, uh, to be screwed up. Uh, uh, but again, you see, you come back to Pat, if, I suppose when you were working in the Dairy Journal, and one of your colleagues there, you really worked very well with or happy with or liked, uh, you know, suppose they'd done something that really yeah. was wrong. You know, you'd have to think long and hard before. Well, I think it would. I would anyway. Uh, yeah. Before I, I blow the whistle. I but you know, um, you know somebody. I think we're going down a sort of rabbit hole here. Surely there was an, an onus on the people in charge of the Gardaí Chicana to say to the the heavy gang, right lads, wait a minute. That's you know, yes, uh, that's enough of that. Yeah, there shouldn't yeah, have been standards. They didn't have to sort of um, you know throw them to the wolves or something. Right. Right. Well, I, I agree. But, but, yeah. but Pat, you see, uh, the thing is. We agree on the principle of the thing, but yeah. then when we put ourselves in a particular position, then it's harder for us to put that into practice. So what I'm saying is, in some ways, some horrible ways, it's understandable that there was a, an omerta system in the Gardaí. In some ways, it's understandable that, you know, Pope Benedict and other bishops and so on push priests on into different situations yeah. rather than report them to the authorities. This idea that we're all... You know, we we would go straight to authorities. We would be horrified at any bad thing. Yeah. That actually, in reality, doesn't hold all the time. You no, know? I, so I, I just think we should watch. We, the danger of hypocrisy is there. You know. Yeah. Not saying you're you, a, uh, not saying you're a hypocrite, yeah. Pat. You're not. No, a no, I'm not. You're not as bad as everybody else. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. and, I, and I take your point. It's well made. 
But uh, dude, that there should be the structures in place. Yeah. yeah that yeah. it shouldn't be down to me or you. Yeah. That there should be an oversight. That it's not. I. I am not. Me and Jude Collins are friends, so therefore it shouldn't be on us and me. But there should be some superstructure where, and I know people are saying, wait, "Wait a minute, what's going on there?" Some, I, 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 yeah. uh, some sort of outside body that should yeah. be there to, you know, because every institution needs uh, some yeah. sort of supervision. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more, Pat. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I, in fact, in a way, a, a structure like that is what should be used to save people from themselves. Themselves, exactly. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay, final story. God, I mean, look at that time. Not a child's face washed. Now, uh, there's one last item, which is the Irish Examiner this morning, and I'm sure there's other places as well. And it's talking about setting up, I think I'd say, that there's thought about setting up programs in schools to educate children in terms of how women should be treated in the light of the terrible murder of Ashley Murphy. Ashley Murphy um, yeah. and, and try to develop, I think what they call some like an interventionist culture. So that people wouldn't sit silent when examples of sexism or misogyny yeah, yeah. or whatever were in operation or much less anybody you know harassing or, or doing any kind of violence to a woman yeah um what's your thoughts on that pat that good Jude, i don't know a lot about it but i, I agree Jude, it is an issue there's no doubt about it you know uh i've listened to quite a few interviews you know there's vox pops i've heard among this yeah you know people have been interviewed and young girls seem to serve uh, well women Sorry, I keep saying young girl. Women seem all seem to report that somewhere in the past that they've felt sort of intimidated yes. or felt yes. threatened, or and that they're worried about going out on their own. There's yeah. a, even a, a, a woman, my dear wife knows, says she used to go walking. Now she'd be very concerned about walking on her own. And I've yeah. heard that so often. Jude, the, the, the only thing is, Jude, here's the point. I think you made the point the last thing. It's all very well saying changing attitude. But then they're talking about bringing in the legislation. How does legislation change attitudes? Mm, mm, that's right. Well, I suppose by penalising people for doing the wrong thing. You know, I uh, mean, yeah. you might have an attitude to seatbelts, but if there's a law in that says you have to have it on, <laughs> you can swallow your your attitude and uh, just obey the law. No, but uh, you know, when uh, Jude, when I I remember years ago in, in Italy in the 19s, they used to nip women on the backside, uh -huh. uh, the, and it was sort of a. You know, a they used to wolf, wolf whistle in the street. Uh, boys used to make remarks to girls as they were going past and all that. That became sort of unacceptable. Uh, society's changed. Now, but they always say, Jude, I've heard it uh, uh, quite a lot. You know, with the advent of social media, um, Jude, the biggest thing by far uh, I looked up on the social media was porn. And there's a lot of people who, and I've read quite a lot, saying, uh, pornography and the or the prevalence of pornography has almost sort of um, made the, the, sort of this whole thing about sex and women that are objectified and, and all the and it's loosened and uh, degraded the whole uh, respect for womanhood and all the rest of it. and you know, I think there's an element of truth in that. Oh yeah, I I I'd agree with you. Of course, definitely. Jesus, if I was a woman, I think I'd be a raging feminist. I really would. Well, uh, to uh, some degree, so too, I do yeah. feel a raging feminist. You see, women. I mean, women are paid less. They get less promotion. My God, yeah. you know, if I was a black or an Irish person, yeah. or something, you'd say yeah. that's not happening. Stop that uh, right now. Uh, but yeah. that's women have had have had to put up with that for you know centuries. But yeah. um, I just find this interventionist culture quite an interesting one because they're essentially saying that you know you shouldn't sit quiet if you see yeah. somebody doing or saying. Well, I, I, I agree with that boy. I, I well, I agree with it. Too. I agree with the yeah. theory, Pat. But I tell you something. Uh, you try it on. Try it on sometime uh, because you might, for a starter, might you might need to be quite. Um, what would you say? Um, courageous. Yeah. Courageous. Yeah. I, I mean, the set the scene. You're in the underground uh, in London. Uh, yeah. It's 12 o'clock at night. You're in a carriage with, uh, there's one other person, a young woman sitting a few seats up. Uh, yeah. Two, three, four, four young lads young get on. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. start going up to her and giving her a squeeze and saying all sorts of things. Are you going to intervene? Are you going no, to intervene? No, it's funny. I knew you'd, you'd come up with a scenario like that. But, and you're dead, right? It's a, it's a very, uh, but you see, you're absolutely describing what women are. Uh, this, dude, that should not happen. And uh, there should be some, there should, uh, in, uh, and the technology that's in it nowadays, uh, a bus should have uh, video cameras, yeah. and the driver yeah. should be able to alert somebody yeah, right yeah. away, you know, uh, and there should be, and, you know. 
I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not for a moment uh, saying that we shouldn't be trying to find ways. No, yeah, no, your, your, your point's well made. Exactly, we should do that. Uh, like, yeah. should, I would like you think that you get up uh, and, you know, but at this stage, should, I am uh, near 70 than 60, uh, and the four young men sitting there, like, what's yeah. my chances of, uh -huh. um, you know? Well, you see, I agree. And, I, and even when I was a young guy, I would have thought twice about it. Uh, and exactly. I mean, this is a thing they say about violence. Like, if yeah. you see somebody doing violence, do you tackle the guy who's doing the violence, or do you yeah. keep out of his way yourself? You yeah. know, most well, people. There's a there's a there's people. an ad on uh, there's an ad on an RT at the moment. There's a young woman of African descent, and she, it's a very very good ad. She says she get on the bus and you say, I "Wonder will I be next?" You know, some sort of racist remark, and mm -hmm. she's just sitting there chatting, and you can see the look of stress on her face. You know, mm -hmm. obviously she's you know, and you. I'd say a lot of women get on buses at night, very concerned about uh, looking around who's on this bus and so on. Mm -hmm. Will I be subjected to uh, sexual remarks? Will I be, you know, whatever? Mm -hmm. That is totally unacceptable. But the point I'm making originally, how do you change attitudes? I, I know you can bring in laws and you can bring in, but like, how do you change attitudes? Yeah, because I'm not two or three young fellas get on a bus in their yeah, bus yeah. and they start yeah. making sexual, uh, you no know, sexual in the end type remarks yeah. to a young woman. How do you stop that? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know the, that you can actually, and I'm not sure inter, intervening is the best way to do it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. All I know is that Patricia McBride, you know Patricia McBride? Uh, the, yeah, um, the lawyer. She's she, she, a lawyer. And she, was, she did a tweet the other day and she said she, um, I think it was her, uh, she was um, on the train or the bus or something and two people got on and hadn't got their masks on and she asked them very politely if they put on their masks. And she said the abuse she got for saying that, yeah. and was something shocking. And I know for a fact that that's the kind of way people react, because yeah. you're telling the person you're doing the wrong thing and I want you to do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a tricky one, isn't it? On the one hand, yeah. we often yeah. say, you know, everybody else, everybody has to pick up their own mind and you can't be forcing yeah. people and saying, because yeah. I believe in this, you've got to believe in this. Uh, yeah. And yet, you know, look at the way it goes. When you know yeah. you're yeah. doing, trying to get people to do something good or the right yeah. thing, you get dogs abuse. Yeah, very, well, very, that, very, oh, that's right. But Jude, that's obvious. It's a very personal responsibility, I suppose. Yeah. But Jude, you, uh, but there's no, nothing in this life is sort of simple. Like, <laughs> you, uh, if you if you if you get on a bus and there's four young fellas abusing some woman, yeah. you would like yeah. to think you'd do the right thing, but would you? Mm. You'd be tempted to say maybe all good people should be equipped with a cosh. <laughs> okay, Pat. Oh, okay, okay, Jim. We'll leave it. On okay. that note, we'll leave it. Thanks very much. Cheers. Enjoy your weekend.